Oh, Smokey. <laughs> well, I'm getting back to working on smoking. Smoke, <laughs> I'm not getting back to smoking because I never did smoke. Don't like smoking. If you smoke, that's fine. I just, anyways, it's not for me. But look what I got. I got um, some actual color match paint and it's really cool. It's got like a hardener, so it's got two ends on it. And I guess you, yeah, pop this end, it mixes it and then you spray it. And this is for, for Duke's frame. So we got color match to go over the fifth wheel so it matches. And I can do, I got two cans, so I can do the front axle too. Um, got some more starting fluid because you never have too much of that. And <laughs> I got a new pipe for the, the turbo. So a new one is $1,000, I pay $200 plus shipping from a um, truck wreckers. But the one thing that this needs is it needs to get painted yellow. So I'm gonna do that today, but I don't know that I'll get it on because, well, we got Dad's back in here because he was servicing it. I need to clean up the shop. Um, Dad's been working on Stubby some more. He got the rear cross member in. Didn't get that on video, but, um, but yeah, we just got a few holes to drill there and I picked him up a few more bolts. I think I should have got some more bolts, but this cross member's in. Then we're gonna have to get some angles made for the frame, taper it, get the transmission in and all that good stuff. But I'll show you why I'm not getting, uh, well, why I'm not washing the 389 today. Cause I thought about doing that. <laughs> because it's snowing, I know. Yeah, it's snowing. Um, but yeah, I was, if it was warmer today, I was gonna, you know, clean up the outside, but that'll have to wait for a, a plus warmer day. And also I, I can't touch up Duke because, well, I'm gonna have to bring him inside and thaw him out and warm him up. But I tell you, I sure love this truck. It's looking so good. I really need to fix that antenna though, because it bugs me that it's bent, so, but. <laughs> uh, yeah, to put it in the shop, it's gonna take, a while to to thaw out and oh that wind is chilly and there's snow so yeah maybe at the end of the day i'll uh i'll put duke inside so so it could dry out but uh for you know next weekend but right now we're, we're gonna go inside because it's it's winter out here i mean who would have thunk it and you know that's why i took a stop on working on smoky to get duke's frame all tidied up and that because <sighs> winter was coming and now winter's here and look now smoky's all nice and warm inside so we could be all nice and warm inside too but take a look at this so i think in the last video when we started the 359 and it ran away i think it's old fuel in the fuel pump that uh, stuck the, the plungers. Now, this, the, I mean, the good news is we have a complete another fuel pump. That turns, I don't know if that turns. That must be an air shutdown, but um, not sure what that is. I'll have to do some learning. But I don't know if this fuel pump is any good. Um, the one thing I do know is that we have it. So what we could do is pull this one off, tear into it, and just see if it's, um, if it's stuck and if it can be used. But um, the reality is, I think you guys that want 359 content right away, it's probably gonna have to wait. I know, I don't wanna wait either. But the problem is there just isn't enough room in the shop right now. And I gotta get Smokey done because you know what? I don't wanna be that guy that has a project that goes on for years and years and then someone says, oh, can I buy it? It's like, no, no, it's uh, I'm, I'm gonna get back to it one day. Well, we're gonna get back to it today because because I wanna get it done. I really wanna get that day cab interior in like in the worst way. So that's what we're gonna do. So 359 content might wait for a bit. I don't know, let's we'll see if we get some nice days. But, uh, but the good thing is we do have another fuel pump. Whether it works or not, well, that's a whole nother idea because guaranteed that engine's been sitting longer than that engine has so um odds are not good is what i'm saying for 
it to work. But you never know. At least we got a spare. There we go. That looks a whole bunch better. Oh, you know, a guy really should clean up more often because I found stuff that I couldn't find. I know, shocking. So I'm gonna give dad a hand with um, Stubby. He's coming back outside. Um, but before I can put this panel on, I noticed that this spot right here needs a little more fiberglass because there's it's low. But I'm happy with the rest of it. It could use a skim coat of body filler, I think. Um, and of course, I'm gonna be tucking that other panel under here, but I need this a little higher. So I'm gonna do that. And also on the inside, if we look right there, I've got a thin sheet of board as, um, as a uh, structural rigidity addition. So I'm gonna take and put some fiberglass over it it's a little cool, but maybe I'll just mix the fiberglass a little hot. And I got, I got some sanding to do. Like right there, I got a, a divot too. I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can, if that's gonna be a body filler part or a sand part, but. Um, uh, but yeah, it's time to get back on this, get the side on. I'm just sniffing the inside. Still smells a little bit smoky, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull that seat out. And before I put this side on, I think, certainly before I put um, the interior pieces on, I wanna give it a good clean. Cause actually once we put this side on, you know, I can tape up those windows and we could actually keep it sealed up. So if I clean everything and you know, I'll pull that driver's seat out and you know, I should be able to get the smoky smell out. I think, you know, and then I gotta clean all this stuff cause that's all gotta, <laughs> that's all gotta go back inside. So anyways, I'm gonna get a sander, hit that and uh, yeah, we'll just get back to work. Ugh. Cause the goal is to have smoky running and driving by next summer, which you know what, it's lots of time. It shouldn't be a problem, but you know how that goes. So. Ah yes, back to the dirty, dusty bodywork. But you know what the best part is? It's inside. Okay, change of plan. I don't have a small brush to put resin on. So I'm gonna move to this wiring because, because um, we're gonna have to get it all tidied up in order, in order for the heater to work and stuff. So um, I'm just gonna get all the burnt stuff cleaned off and then see, cause it's, it's all burnt. Yeah, I know. Um, but right now it's the wires are melted. Like there's melted stuff on them. And uh, so we're just gonna clean them up so that uh, we can figure out where everything goes in the future. Mm. 
And it smells a little smoky. I have a feeling this truck might smell smoky for a long time. Maybe not, but probably. Well, I think what I'm gonna do with these wires is I'm gonna leave them. I got the, the casing off. Now, these plugs have some heat damage, so they're gonna need to be replaced. Um, but I think I'll wait till I get the panel in there so I can extend the wires and I know where they go. Like, I think these ones are speaker wires, so. Yeah, I probably don't need to worry about those right now, but uh, so that's what we're going to do there. And uh, OK, I almost forgot. I got to paint my pipe <laughs> and I got to wash it with brake clean. So I'm going to do that and then the paint can dry and I can paint it again and I can paint it again. And it's really snowing out there. <laughs> Make it yellow. Yellow-er. Is that the new one? Yeah. Oh. Well, <clears throat> new used. Oh. Where'd you get that? I ordered it from Payless Truck Parts. Oh. I saw it on their website and it is the same part number, so. Two hundred dollars. Oh, yeah. A new one's a thousand. Yeah. The price. The price. Feels like it should break. Yeah. I've got a tool. This yeah, way. yeah, no, that's okay. I gotta cut the plate for here now and okay. then I'll start on this one. Okay, something I forgot to do is <laughs> clean out this jockey box. I know, it's, it's been a while. But the goal is, what's that? The goal is, is to get this truck driving by spring. I know. I guess I'm interrupting your video. Well, you are a little noisy. <laughs> sparky too. Yes, you are sparky. Taking the liberty to clean all the stuff out of here. Why not? <laughs> because I said so. Because we're going to get it rolling. 
rolling, rolling, rolling. And you know why? Here's a perfect example of why we should have looked in here first. Here's a perfect example of why we should look in here first because there's a muffler clamp. So we can take those ones back off and use them for, uh, for that now truck. There's only one there. Well, one is better than none though. Yeah. Maybe there's more. <laughs> Bell. <sighs> Texaco antifreeze. When have you seen a Texaco in Canada? A tachograph in here too. And a tube of grease. That's interesting. Cardboard. Dirt and nails. Oh, lots of dirt. Ugh. That is unreal. How much dirt? Don't forget though, this thing used to run to the Yukon all the time. And it wasn't for uh, big drones up there. All the way up Another thing that I got to get off my <clears throat> my uh, to-do list is give this um, panel a sand because what um, because what I want to do is sand this panel so then once I huck it on the hot bolt the gunk I uh, don't really have to sand it just give it a little you know touch up around the rivets and that so. I'm gonna give it a shot with some 320 and uh, get one more thing off the list because the more I think about it, the more I think, you know, I just need to get this sidewall in and move on. So I wish I need to get some small brushes. That's kind of mucking me up here a little bit, but bouncing around a bit, but you know what? It's Saturday and it's kind of miserable outside. Let me show you. Look at that. I don't know if you can see it. But it's blustery. It's blustery is what he's saying. Ugh. Good day to just find inside stuff to do. Yeah, I got it. It's been so long since I've done this, I don't know if I remember how. So this is, <clears throat> so I've sanded it with, there we go. I've sanded it with 320. <clears throat> so now technically that's ready for paint or maybe more primer, I don't know. And I also have the ceiling foam. Um, I don't know why I just did that. Uh, 
<laughs> so you can see it's a very thin foam. And this I'll put on the back side and go around all the edges. And uh, so then when you put it on, it can squish and it seals it. So you don't end up with a leak because nothing worse than a leaky cab. I know, <clears throat> but so this is all pre-drilled with all the holes. So it should be pretty easy to go on, except for this row right here. Because I didn't have a template for it. So let me show you what I'm thinking. So this is the row of holes that I need to get lined up again. And I got thinking, what if, it's just a thought, what if I take this chunk of aluminum that I have and drill pilot holes? Because right now, with the panel not being there, I can get in behind. So what if I drill a hole and drill all the holes in this, and then when I put the panel on, I can put the panel on, line up all the other holes, and then just drill a top hole and I can line it up. And then the bottom holes, which I can't get to from the backside, I can just, you know, zip them through for, blah, blah, zip, zip them through from the front. That's what I was thinking. And really, these ones here, like these ones here. Now what was here? Is these, I think these are hucks. Yeah, those are hucks. So these ones here I can, uh, I can do from the back side, but those ones there, I can't because there's gonna be a panel here. So then you're gonna be like, eh, and then these ones here are also behind that little bracket there. So, um, yeah, that's, that's a bit of a problem with doing it this way. Because if it wrapped around, I'd have that straight edge where they'd huck here. But I didn't do this curve, which, I don't know. Maybe it was a mistake, but it's kind of too late to worry about that now. So anyways, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, I found a different little strip that I'm gonna use. Ah. <clears throat> now, if I go like that. Now I've got a nice template for the distance of the holes. So, are they straight? Ah, oh, yeah, it's fine. it's fine. Okay, so now let's put our uh, tape on, I think. I'm gonna get, uh, get some cleaning wipes, some glass cleaner, just clean this up.
are you making out? Oh, I'm making out. I gotta take these shims out because I'm a quarter of an inch that way. So I gotta take these shims out, move the axle that way. Uh -huh. That's the plan, Sam. Yeah, they look a little bigger than the washers on this side. Yeah, but it all depends. You've got to measure from the frame to the brake drums. Oh. Okay. Actually, I know what's wrong. Just a minute before I do anything. Let's see, this side is jacked up. Just hold that there. Oh, shit. Pipe is up there. So I need to take those spacers out. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> now it should be perfect. Well, it be a key word. We're close enough. Just about nine and three eighths. Sixteen over nine. It's about the same. It's Perfect. Nine. So you figure that tail frame's too long, eh? I think so. The only thing is, is look at Duke, and it's too short. Because you can't. You got those that's mud flaps on duke and i'd like to put the stainless mud flaps on here yeah i just think that i mean whatever you want i just think it should be shorter i mean that's why if it's, it's... going to be a tractor with a fifth wheel is it i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i know what i was going to measure just for shits and well i need to go measure my jeep oh See, originally my plan <laughs> was to drive the Jeep on lengthways because it's too long to go crossways. Yeah. It's to drive the Jeep on lengthways and then hook my fifth wheel behind. And I can kind of build a deck. Mm hmm But your mother won't go in the cab over, so that plan kind of all fell through. Still a fun plan, but... Well, I mean, it's still a plan. I mean, still, person would still do it. I think it's definitely long enough. Well, or just long enough. I don't know how long it is though. I've measured it about 14 times and I can't remember. Here, I can hold that end. Now well, this isn't long enough anyway. Okay. There's 10 feet right there. The 
See, right now, it's 16 feet. Hmm. Without going and measuring the chief, I don't really, I, for some reason I was thinking it was 14 feet long. But. Well, and I was going to say I was thinking 15, but. Yeah, it's somewhere in there. Figure small car trailers are 16 feet, I think. Yeah, but. but. I'm debating on just putting that panel in. When do you want to drill those holes? I don't care. <laughs> Whenever. Are there pilot holes? <clears throat> well, yeah. See, the reason is, is like this is aluminum and I couldn't get the frame drill to stick. Because mm. the drill is right in front of the magnet. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't get the magnet to stick to the aluminum, which I knew I couldn't. Anyways, I'm gonna jack this up, take this tire off, and then we'll have more room in there. Okay. Let's quickly do it and get it over. Making the drill bit drill bitty again. I'm gonna use a bar and a chain. Do we have a chain? I know we have a chain. We just need a short chain though. Why don't you put the chain on this side? And you can be over here. And you can play. Okay. That's why I didn't really want to drill these two holes without. No. Oh. Like that drill bit's getting pretty much toast. But now it's either going through the insert, unless it's coming through. Looks like it's coming through. Yeah, it's through. coming through, and it, it's a, it can be a proper bitch when you're. I just took the corner off the bit. Yep. And then like from spinning, it's just worn down. Oh, yeah. I cut that much off it because I didn't realize with that magnetic drill how to get the thing to go up higher. Oh. I didn't need to, which I learned after. Well, this one's a power fist, so you know it's gonna be good. <laughs> Which the cutting oil? Yeah.
I think we should try drilling the other hole so then if we bugger the bit up, we only have to punch through yeah. on both sides. Yeah. <laughs> Not saying that I think we're going to bugger it up, but you know. Hey. You never know. trouble with all my tools is they're getting old mm -hmm. and wore out. A lot of them are just wore out. And my drill press, <laughs> it was a cheap Chinese drill press to start with and it never got any better. It kind of, it's better than not having one but not much. See what the weather's like outside. Oh. Oh yeah, it's a little snowy now. Oh, of course it's been snowy. But the wind's blowing. It's kind of gross. Much nicer in the shop. Let's hope the so. I don't see why it wouldn't actually. Well, we should have done this to start with. Okay? Yes. Oh. <laughs> yes. uh. You know when it grabs. <laughs> <laughs> See why it'll break your wrist? Yeah. Can't believe it broke my Chinese drill bit. <laughs> I can't. Like I told you before, this stupid thing will do stuff like that. <laughs> Can you get it out? Might have to put a crescent wrench on it. A pair of ice grips. Yeah. Crescent wrench might do it. Because it's kind of square. Oh yeah, it came out. Easy. Yeah. Suspension bolts are done? Yep. The suspension is all in. The thing that needs to be done next is the bolt set. Hmm.
Are they painting that 389? Yeah. Where, just the yellow? Uh, yeah, I'm going to leave like a quarter inch outline of the yellow and then paint it green. Oh, yeah. So the yellow will be like a pinstripe. Oh, yeah. oh, and I didn't tell you, or or did I, that Tom's truck burned up. Yeah. Yeah. Did it burn his trailer too? Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Because uh, the, well, the front tire of the trailer caught fire, and once it caught fire, then it, it ran everything to the back and yeah, right to the very last trailer tires, just completely gone. Where at? Uh, somewhere between Chetwind and... Oh, he was on the road when it happened? Yeah. Oh. Empty. Oh. So yeah, good thing we have a truck for him now. Well, that's the good part. It's like I was telling you about Ryan Colville. Sold his truck and then couldn't find one. Yeah. So. Anyways, maybe tomorrow I'll put the drive shaft in because I got the U joints here. And then I'll do the tail frame. However, I might put the tire on and then measure back and see how far we want it. But like I just left it like that because I didn't know exactly how we wanted it. Yeah. Well, and we could measure. Well, you go look at Duke and I think his is too short. Yeah, it's a little too short, but you know, four inches more than it would be perfect. Yeah, which is about two inches more than this. But see also, once you bring that down, you're also going to cut that much off. You don't want to burn? Wow. I should go grab a tape or take the tape well, measure. See what I mean? You see, you, you, you cut it there. Yeah. Right there. Then like that. But then when you bend it down. Because that's going to be shorter. You know, then it's there. Yeah. So what you do then is you cut it straight up and across. Well, I should measure Duke and see how far the tail frame is from that airbag. I guess I'll go out in the cold and do this. <laughs> ah, dookie, dookie, dookie. Oh, oh, we got a bit of snow. <laughs> oh, it's cold out here. I know, Mike, quit whining. Okay, so if we go from the airbag back, we're uh, basically seven and a half inches. Seven and a half inches, and that could be just a little bit, just a little bit bigger, longer. Okay. Okay, so if we measure back from the airbag, seven and a half inches is basically right where that white line is. Yeah, so I think we should make it past that white line and up for... For mud flaps? Yeah. It's like maybe there? Yeah. Yeah. Because it's seven and a half inches, so... Yeah. That's basically exactly there, so... Yeah. And then, like, what if we put the mud flap hanger one bolt there and one there... I think they go vertical, though. I think it was only the old Columbia ones that went the other way. Of course. Well, then we'll use that hole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we'll have to, get a, have to get a new bit to... Yeah. A new bit. But... Where did you get that bit? KMS. Oh. I'll have to buy some more. Or buy one or something. Um, either that or use the gas axe. <laughs> we can drill a hole. <laughs> I wonder if any of the holes on the other side line up to the... Oh, no, they won't. No. This Mike, way. since we're doing this on the budget, so that hole's about eight and a half to this one. If 
we go there, eight and a half. Yeah, I'm done. Well, what's the back one? It's another. Nine, nine and a half? Ten. Ten? Ten and a half-ish. See, on that side, there's two, one above the other. Yeah, and that's not quite. Well, or pick up the two on this side and drill on that side. Mm -hmm. The only kicker is, is if that side ends up half a hole out. You just drill right through it. See, actually, that's where a ream is good. If it's half a hole out. Yeah. Well, actually, no. I was I was thinking of something else. I just realized something. Why does this have such a big fitting on the brakes? Because look at the size of the brake lines. But see, these are the brake lines for it right here. This block here has to move back, and that's the brake lines for the back axle. You know what I should do is get a roll of rubber hose. Well, it's either that or buy those made up ones. Well, and just because I'm thinking with that, I'm just surprised that it would use such a big yeah. hose. Well, that's for the brakes. The brakes are the big hoses. The maxi's the small hose. See, and that, well, that's just a... It's just a block because the valve is up there. See, I have to move, I have to move that valve back here for this axle, and then these lines go back to this block for the back axle. Oh yeah. Wow, and I don't even know if we need to use that aluminum block again. Well, we don't. Because it probably won't get the fittings out or it'll well, be... Well, if I heat it up, they'll come out. Yeah. Whatever you figure. Whatever you figure. But if you want to use those fittings, like those spring fittings, I've got a zillion of them, I think. I used to have. Well, I got some too that, I got some. It's my good English. I got some. Um, we'll replace the wire braid up front. See, this needs to be replaced because it's broken. Yeah. But what I was gonna do is I was just gonna take two T's and weld them together. Weld a piece in between them. Yeah. You know, I, I've never seen new trucks do that where they bolt it to the frame like that. You know, because generally they all go up to here and mm -hmm. it's kind of odd. Um, we could just get some pre-made lines for the maxis. I think, well, some of these maxis are probably toast. We might want to put new ones on. Well, remember they all, the brakes all released. But I think one leaks. Oh, that's highly possible. But we won't worry about them until the thing moves. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe tomorrow I'll come out and put the drive line in. Maybe. Okay, so that's the same kind of block. See, yeah. So the airlines actually move with the axles. Yep. Yeah. That one's rubbed through. Yeah. That yeah, needs all new lines. Yeah. Well, and I wonder if we should even bother reusing those or if we should make mounts or well see if we take this block and bring it back well you still need a T uh, yeah <clears throat> that block will bring back to here find a hole here to mount and then yeah we'll just use these and you know like here well like that's well that's not but that's for the locker yeah Locker. It's One thing I thought of maybe doing. Dual lockers, man. Is running a line between this rear end and that rear end, putting a T on a top on it with a fitting so we can air it up to move it, and then we'll put the transmission in. Because mm -hmm. we're going to have to lift the transmission out with the back hole. Yeah. And I don't know whether I should come in the shop and pick it up with a backhoe and take it over here or just, we'll just push the truck ahead. Well, you might be able to back in 
-hmm. and extend the hoe out and then pull it back. Let's just push the truck ahead. Okay. And then we can always we can always pull it back. Yeah. It's well. just a matter of picking it up now and pulling the saw horse out and it's on the ground. Really we could just cage the brakes too. Well, if I just make up a line for there and for here, yeah, and put a tap on it, we can air them up, turn the tap off. Yeah, true. We can, we can. That'll work. So. Anyways. All right, well, let's go home before it gets too wintry.